and welcome to our webinar. Thank you so much for tuning in today as we talk about our, our friendly cupcake wars, our friendly food fight cupcake wars, um, and this family consumer sciences lesson plan uh, that NASCO has had available for a few years now. Uh, and Stephanie wrote for with NASCO kind of presenting these ideas to help share out to teachers. If you haven't seen, we have an entire library of lesson plans, a lot of family consumer sciences lesson plans. And we recently updated them and kind of added some new materials and, and new product set points. So if you haven't been to our website lately to check out the free lesson plans, I recommend now is a great time to go and, and see what's out there. Uh, a few logistics before I turn the, the show over to Stephanie. We have the handouts for the lesson plans that are going to be discussed today, as well as some additional supplementary materials uploaded as handouts in the system. So if you look on your GoToWebinar dashboard, in the handout section, there's three different handouts. I highly recommend that you download those for later use. Uh, once the webinar ends, you won't be able to get them unless you email me, and then I'd be happy to send them to you. Um, but it's probably more convenient for you and me if you are watching this live to just download them. If you're watching this as a recording later, thank you so much for joining us um, and feel free to reach out and I would be happy to send you those lesson plans and links. Also, just to let you know, at the end of this webinar, there will be a survey that would launch. I really would and we would really appreciate any feedback that you have for us. Uh, we do read that feedback closely and, and take it seriously. So also in a post email that we'll send about an hour after this webinar, will be included a certificate of completion for you attending today's webinar. So that is forthcoming in by the end of the day today, you will have that in your inbox. Now, without any further ado, oh, also question box, one last logistic little note. There's a chat box that you can write any questions in. Stephanie has agreed to answer questions as we go. So we would love to have this as a conversation. At any point, feel free to type in that. I will be voicing those questions throughout, um, but we would love to hear your thoughts. And now without any further ado, I wanna introduce officially Stephanie Fox, who's joining us today, tell you a little bit about her and then turn it over. So thank you, Stephanie, for joining us. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. And Stephanie Fox earned two bachelor's degrees from UW, Stevens, uh, UW Stout in 2005. She's a family and consumer sciences education and technology education educator. In 2010, she earned a dual certification and master's degree from UW Stout in career and technical education. She's been teaching for the last 15 years in several school districts, gaining knowledge and momentum with each. She is currently the Family and Consumer Sciences teacher for the School District of North Fond du Lac in Wisconsin and manages the two student-run enterprises at the school, Food for Thought Cafe and Threaded Nest. She is the only Family and Consumer Sciences teacher in the district, teaching as many as 12 classes in a year, from sewing to culinary arts, from childcare to middle school. Over the years, her experience has allowed her to grow and develop some of her favorite units and make them work with any student in her classroom. In addition to family and consumer sciences, Stephanie is also a seasoned driver's ed instructor and runs a home-based business doing that work. She resides in the, the village of North Fond du Lac with her husband and two two-year-old two twins. As a family, they enjoy the outdoors, cooking, board games, and spending time with extended family. So all in all, Stephanie's a very busy human. So really thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm so excited to learn more about these cupcake wars. All right, thank you, Jenny. And I'm excited to be here. Um, so kind of as she said, I, I am a busy body 100% and um, really into the hands-on learning and that sort of thing. So that a lot goes along with my education and what I do and why I love family and consumer sciences so much. So. Um, like she mentioned, I am the sole family and consumer sciences teacher in North Fond du Lac. As many as 12 classes in a year right now, I currently have 10. Um, so some hours of my school day, I have two different classes going on at the same time, which sure makes life interesting. But um, as Jenny and I were kind of talking, my students know I kind of fly by the seat of my pants most of the time, and they've just gotten used to that. So the flexibility works great for my classroom. And that's kind of where this started to come about. Um, so I've just included a few pictures here of my own 
cake decorating um, and things because I really just have a passion for being creative with food. Um, so some of the different things that I've learned to do along the way really made me want to teach baking and pastry arts as a dual credit course. And I was able to get that approved by our local technical college. And one of the things they made me do um, to be able to teach their course at a high school level, this was when I was in a previous district, I had to take their baking and pastry arts course. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I did actually the entire course gluten-free as an extra challenge to myself because I can't, I can't just do the bare minimum. That's not how I roll. And when I was there, I was in, it really inspired by Chef Sue. She's one of the chef instructors that we have at our local technical college. And fun fact about Chef Sue, she actually used to be the personal chef to Prince, the musician Prince. So yes, she is an incredible lady um, and an amazing pastry artist and an amazing cake decorator. And so I actually learned so much from her. And I'm, I'm blessed to have her in my life. And she actually made my kids first birthday cake for us. So, um, but I just really wanted to learn more about cake decorating myself and bring it to my students so I could teach it as part of the baking and pastry arts course. So along with the Moraine Park baking and pastry arts class or the technical college class, I did also the entire Wilton cake decorating series through our local fabric store. Um, just Joanne Fabrics and the local experts that they have teaching those classes and learned a lot. And it's actually one of my students' mom um, that taught it. I currently have her oldest daughter in class, but learned so much and I've done a lot of fun things along the way and just wanted to bring it to my students as a hobby and possible future career goal, especially for those creative students. So where we were and where we are now. So the pictures you see on the screen are the first year I did Cupcake Wars. And we started super small, super basic. And when I was looking through these pictures to decide what to put in this, I was like, oh my gosh, we've come a long way. This was a Dr. Seuss themed year. So um, I always give them a new theme and it's super fun to come up with themes. I've actually done Dr. Seuss twice now. But this was our very first year. I am very impressed with the Horton that came about from Horton here at the Who. And the attempt at the cat in the hat, I mean, the students did a real nice job, but we started super small with a few basic skills. And every year I've changed and modified it to make it more fun, make it more challenging to meet the needs of my students. And that's one thing I love about this project is it really meets students where they are. If they're gonna be super basic with piping, that's okay, we can do that, we can work with that. But if I see a student who is just a natural, it's easy to challenge them to do something more too. So um, I, when I start the project, and I'll kind of get into my schedule a little bit here too, but we start with piping mashed potatoes. That's one of the things that I start with because boxed mashed potatoes are so much cheaper than buttercream. So we always start with that as a way to just learn and we just pipe onto wax paper. And so I can teach them some of the basic technique. And then they plan, there's a lot of planning that goes into it and things like that. But like I said, every year it changes a little bit. I add something, I change the requirements a little bit and it just makes it super fun for the students. They know that it's coming, but they don't know what I'm gonna throw at them. And the day that I announce the theme is like, the most exciting day in my classes. They just get super excited for that. So this we is just, work. Yeah. Oh, Stephanie, sorry. We just had our first question come in. Sure, um, someone asked if you had a favorite theme that you've done. Oh, I don't think I have a favorite. Last year I did kids birthday party. That was my theme that I gave the kids last year. And I actually had a class. There was just seven girls in the class and they all did Disney. Um, so that's the way they took kids' birthday party, which is not what I was expecting. Um, winter is maybe my favorite that I've done because some took it towards Christmas and some took it towards more snowflakes. Um, but I, yeah, not really a favorite. I, maybe Dr. Seuss too, because I've done it twice, but it inspires so much creativity when you just give them more of a broad theme than saying cat in the hat. I like to 
let their minds be creative. Like, what do you think of when you think of kids' birthday party? Um, this year, when we do it, I'm actually thinking about telling them retirement just to see what they do. <clears throat> um, I think that would be maybe an extra challenge to them, maybe not as cute. So I'm still thinking that one. Um, but I always try to gear it towards something that can be colorful and fun. And if you think about the show Cupcake Wars, their themes are always very vi vibrant and fun. So I have to gauge my group a little bit more. I, they've only been with me for two weeks. So I have to gauge them a little bit more and see, see how creative they're going to be and if they can handle something like retirement. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think the ones that I listed there when I was thinking about this are probably my favorites that I've done. I've done this probably about 10 times. So those were the ones that came to my mind. So those would probably be my favorite. That's excellent. Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Keep those questions coming. Um, so this is part of the worksheet or the handout that I give to my students. And I'm not going to read through it all because you, you can download it, but I'm super clear with my expectations. And that's just how I operate my classroom is this is handed to students and we go through it specifically so they know um, they know what they need to do from the beginning. And I put in here chosen theme because that comes at the end after we've talked about all of the things that they need to do. I provide basic things for them. And sometimes I give them a budget depending on what my budget is for the school year. Like I'll spend up to five more dollars on your project if you need like a certain like little pearls or you know whatever they might need for their cake decorating. I try to get them to do more of the um, homemade stuff versus the store-bought fondant and things like that. And I usually tell them like, let's just do buttercream. That's a little bit easier. Um, and then I can more streamline the way I'm teaching it. So, um, but really, no matter if you want to do something like this, whatever your comfort level is with cake decorating and with the piping skills is where you can take it. And if you're an expert at fondant, that would be super fun to do and some molding and, and things like that. But I do allow them to bring things from home. I haven't done this during COVID time. So I'm still thinking about what that's going to look like for this year. Um, in the fall, we didn't do this because we're in a hybrid model of learning right now. And so I just did cookie decorating with my students in the fall and they just made a dozen cookies to take home. We didn't bring in judges like we normally do. So I'm trying to think of how this is gonna look for the spring because we will be back um, in school when we do this. So I'm trying to think of, of what it's gonna look like and what I'm going to allow them to bring in. But during non-COVID times, I certainly let them bring um, things from home to help with their design, to help with their display, if they have something specific, that sort of thing. But I just kind of give them a list and then um, just really talking with all my groups and seeing what else they need. So one of the things that I give in the handout is a schedule. So this is just one that I pulled up. This is actually from last fall, um, which was the last time that I did Cupcake Wars. So this was the fall of, gosh, what was that, that event, 2019. Um, so I lay it out. So this is what we're doing every single day. Um, so kind of give them a schedule so they know what's going on. I, I have built in here, I just copied and pasted this. We had to take a break because we had um, some desserts to do for a, a, an event that happens in our village, a, a big thing that we have to make, gosh, I don't know, 50 dozen cupcakes for or something. But um, they have the piping skills by then to do a basic swirl on the top with a 1M tip. So um, it's nice to build this in when we do those Optimus desserts. I like building this in and teaching them the basic skills so they can help me pipe the cupcakes. Um, but I always include like we watch an episode of Cupcake Wars so they can kind of see on a big scale what this can be. And of course, we, you know, we tone it down. But demonstrations in practice, I have days built in where they can just make mashed potatoes and I help them learn different piping skills. And we watch videos from the Wilton's website where I will demonstrate for them. We get out all the tips that we have, um, just a wide variety of stuff. And so they have a few days to just, just practice and just learn and just play. And it, that's some of the fun in all of this also is they can take it wherever they want. Um, 
but you know, a week or so into it, they have to decide on a flavor for their cupcakes that's going to go with the theme. So I encourage them to not make plain chocolate or vanilla cupcakes. So when we do um, like the one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish group, one of them did like a blue moon cupcake. And so they had to figure out how they're going to get their cupcake batter to taste like blue moon. Now I give them a super basic, easy to work with cupcake recipe that they can tweak with different extracts or juices or whatever they want. And so that's one of the things that we kind of work on together. And of course they have to give me a grocery list and, and all that stuff. And then I build in time for them to make their display also, because that's part of what I expect is them to display their cupcakes in kind of a fun and creative way. And then there's just time to, to decorate and design and bake and, and do all of the things. So um, I just really lay it out for them. So if they're missing a day, they know what they're missing. We do have a built-in school-wide sort of study hall time that they're able to come into also and get extra help or clean up if they didn't clean up in class, if they just ran out of time. And Stephanie, quick question. Um, mm -hmm. Someone asked, are you a block schedule or how long your class is? 49 minutes. Okay. So, yep, we do this in 49 minutes. Now, when I started this, I did have block. I did have 90 minutes. And so my time frame for this was shorter. It was more like a week and a half that we would do this in. Um, but now with 49 minutes, and actually when I changed school district, um, we had a modified block. So we'd have three 49 minute classes in a week and one 90 minute class which was really nice, but now we're down to all 49 minutes. So yeah, we try to get a lot done, but if I had a block, I would definitely shorten the window of this. And I know I used to, to do that. Good okay. question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, and just more of the expectations. And again, this is all in the handout, but I don't give big extraordinary prizes, but we do brag about them on like the video announcements and things like that. and. Um, all of my other classes are always like, how's Cupcake Wars going? Because it's such a huge thing. We're a small district. So when something like this happens, everybody's asking about it and they just wait for it every year. But I'm just super clear with what they have to do, um, giving them a website to go to, to learn some different techniques, but they can also um, obviously ask me for help, but they have to demonstrate three different techniques. Um, so I encourage them to play around with different tips and things like that and just have fun um and then on judging day so that's my staff really looks forward to this also um so whoever has prep the hour that i have class i send an email to and then of course administrators and, and things like that also um are invited to come in and judge they just have to email me back and i'm very clear with my judges also that um I have high expectations and so I need them to be like honest in the judging because the kids take it so seriously and it's not to hurt feelings or anything like that but um, it's a learning experience for the kids so I want the judges to ask the kids questions too and they really get into it so it's a lot of fun but I want the kids to just give a short presentation about how they pick their design the flavors and what they did so that's part of it too, is just explaining their thought process behind it. Um, they have a worksheet that has to be filled out also. So this is just part of that packet. So they have to do some planning ahead of time and show me this before they're allowed to get into the kitchen and start playing around even with the mashed potatoes. Um, but just a list of things that I need to make sure I have on hand so I can check my supplies and things like that because we do have a restaurant at school, flour, sugar, those sorts of things. I've always got 50 pound bags sitting around, um, but that's not the case for everybody too. So that's gonna be a huge thing is because we do go through a lot of powdered sugar and flour and, and butter, so much butter. All right, so here's the judging sheet that we use also. And I threw a picture in of some of my coworkers oh, judging. Before you judge, can I ask one more question? Yeah, um, so we just had a question that came in that said, how many total students in a day are working on the cupcakes? And is there storage in between class periods? And is that a challenge? Good question. So I only have one class that works on this. This is my second year students that I do this with. Um, so they're just wrapping and we, we have a big walk-in fridge because we have a restaurant. 
So we st- like wrap everything super tight and store in the fridge when they're done with class. Um, but if I had more than one class working on this, I don't do this with my first year students. There's no way I could. I teach two sections of that and those classes are like 25 kids. With my second year students, I have, this is the first year I've actually had two sections of it, one each semester. Um, and they're smaller classes, which works nice. I think now I have maybe 10 to 15 students that will be doing this. I have five kitchens. And that's typically how I've divided groups up also is by their kitchen um, and the groups that I normally have them work with. This year, I think I'm gonna have them in pairs. So no more than two in a group, just to kind of keep them apart a little bit more. Um, But when we're working on this, I only have one class working on it at a time. Wonderful, thank you. Yep. So this is the judging sheet, just kind of a little screenshot of what my judges are given and the instructions. So they have to score and then they just walk around. I give them clipboards and a pen and they walk around, they talk with the students. I think the picture that's on the screen was probably when we were done, but they do taste the cupcakes and my students are instructed that they need to cut the cupcakes. You know, if they have a couple flavors, you know, choose one or two and judges can decide they're not going to taste all of the cupcakes and they need to um, cut the cupcakes into small pieces because if there's five groups to try or six groups to try, they're, <laughs> they can't eat that many cupcakes. So we just need to make sure um, after they look at the display that the judges are tasting the cupcakes and things like that. Also, um, in my one thing that's always been in the back of my mind, but my staff tells me this, they know how crazy I am about safety and sanitation in my kitchen. And because we do have a restaurant, they feel safe eating the food that they, the kids make. Um, and again, that's why I wouldn't do it with my first year students is because that's, they're learning more. Um, my second year students are the ones who take serve safe. So they know what's going on. And they're also some of the students that run our restaurant, which is where we've typically done the judging. So that's the picture that you see is in our restaurant at school. So we're able to set that space up with the displays and things too. So this was actually last year when I gave them the kids birthday party theme. This is what they did. Um, so they all took it to Disney, but these are just some of the displays. Um, I really like the creativity of the one group that painted some sugar cone silver and to kind of make it look like a castle and things like that. I will say last year's group did lack some creativity. They did less um, hands-on and less of the decorating than I typically like. Now their displays are beautiful. Don't get me wrong, like that Beauty and the Beast one, that is beautiful. Um, But they just didn't work as hard as most kids usually do. They, I don't think they put the effort in. but with that said, we do have a two layer cake there. So they had to tort the cake and they, they had to do some extra things with it um, to get it to hold up and you know to stay together and, and things like that. So I, I'm not saying that they didn't do a good job because they absolutely did. I was just a little disappointed in, um, in how much they tried and how much they wanted to learn last year. Um, this was a Dr. Seuss year. So, um, the cat in the hat one that's in the middle, that's actually a marshmallow that they piped on. I think that's super creative. Um, I love the Grinch ones with the strawberry. Um, you know, they tried grass with the truffle of trees and um, just some different things there. So, and I, I included one display in the bottom left-hand corner. They put, they took boxes and they made a fish shape out of the boxes for their one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. So I thought their display was pretty cool too. So just some of the things that um, they do with their displays. And then here was a year that we did winter. And so again, you can see some of the displays and they do bring things in from home, um, like that North Pole that's kind of in the middle there. I loved that. That group, I wish I got a closer up image of their snowflake cupcakes. They melted white chocolate and piped snowflakes onto wax paper and put those on top. So I think they did a real nice effort with those. And then um, they put marshmallows and made it look like a melting snowman on some of their cupcakes. So they did a really nice job. Um, 
the one with the pine cone display, that was one student working by herself. She didn't want any partners. She wanted to do it all by herself. So um, she did a fantastic job, I think. So just lots of different ideas that they come up with. Um, and we've always got boxes around and paper and things like that. The Amazon truck definitely comes to my house enough to help all those students with their displays. But just one of the expectations is that they do kind of decorate it a little bit and make it the whole thing appealing to look like, to look at it, not just about the cupcakes. So one of the things in thinking about this is what do my kids actually get out of this, right? It's not just about having fun. Um, obviously, I don't keep track of where all of my students are, but at least five of them that I was thinking about last night are professional cake decorators or bakers now. And this is some of their work. I pulled this off of um, their Facebook pages last night. So I love hearing them and seeing them and what they do with this. And every single one of them would tell you that they were inspired by just doing this little project in my class. So a two and a half week project or a three week project turns into a career for some of these kids. Not every one of them. Some of them are never going to pick up a piping bag again in the future, and that's totally fine. It's not for everybody. But to see what they can do, and I actually did put my kid's birthday cake on there because one of my students did do my kid's birthday cake last year, um, our little mini Daniel Tiger themed party that we had because the big party didn't happen, but um, still got a cake. She still did the cake for us. So um, I just think they do a beautiful job and I, I love seeing them and watching them. And now they're all begging me to do birthday cakes for my kids this year. But just getting them engaged in teaching kids that this could be something that you do with your future. And if not, maybe you just learn enough skills to make your own kids birthday cakes someday or for your family and friends and save some money. And maybe it is a hobby and maybe it is a career. You just never know. And for some kids, they're going to be like, no, I hate this. And that's okay, too. Um, but I just think that these, I, those macaroons up in the corner, she hand painted those. So um, just an amazing job. And that's all I have. So I would love to hear more questions and, and be able to, um, you know, explain things more, too, if, any, if I didn't clearly explain anything because I know I talk kind of fast. So first off, what I'll say is that there are, have been a ton of comments about how beautiful um, a lot of the projects are that you shared. Um, so there's you. been lots of comments about the talent of your students and, and wows and beautiful. So thank you all for, for typing that in. Um, we also had a comment that said, uh, this is really awesome. And I've never thought about teaching this with a box of mashed potatoes before. Um, so that's, that's a, not my original idea. I won't pretend that that's mine. I heard it from somebody else. Um, but yeah, it's so much cheaper and it's, you can change the consistency of it and then you throw it away at the end of the day. But a 99 cent box of mashed potatoes goes a long way. Yeah, brilliant. I love that. And then um, we did also have a question and I was going to ask Stephanie if you're comfortable, um, if you mind sharing this PowerPoint because people would love to see some of these images and then use them as examples in their sure. classroom. Yeah, okay. I, can, I can share this. Honestly, you guys, because I do fly by the seat of my pants, I finished this. I looked at the time at 1030 last night. So it's not perfect, <laughs> but that's how I operate. But sure, absolutely. And I reached out to all of my students that sh that I put their pictures on to and just asked them if I could use their pictures. And they, of course, were very flattered and, and humbled and everything else, too. But um, it's just really cool to see for some of them, how this turns into an absolute passion and um, an amazing future. Like one is the bakery manager at the best donut place in town, so. <laughs> and now you've got some great connections at the best. Absolutely, so now they're, yeah. like I said, they're fighting over who's gonna make my kid's birthday cake this year, so. <laughs> we might yeah. end up with five birthday cakes, it's fine. <laughs> but I don't you can put some in the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> Half birthday cakes too, I mean, that's an option. Yeah, and you know, I always do cupcakes for them. I've never been, okay, so fun fact, kind of off topic, but I've never eaten birthday cake that's been, the candles have both been blown out. I've never eaten that. Now I think people are starting to understand why, <laughs> but I always give my kids cupcakes. They never, 
ever will blow on a cake that anybody else is going to eat. So anyway. Especially good in, in our current pandemic style yeah. world. Um, we did have a couple other questions that came in, so please do keep sending them in. Um, someone asked if you're also willing to share the recipe that you use for your cupcakes. Sure. I know you I said do, it was yeah. a pretty simple one that you add I, flavors to. I start with a box of cake mix, and then I add flour, sugar, sour cream, but I can send that in. Um, and I do it, I'll send you my Google Doc. It's vanilla, chocolate, and orange. I have all together in one doc, but it can right. easily be altered for any flavor. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants the PowerPoint or those recipes, um, send an email to engage at nascoeducation.com. Um, that's kind of where a lot of this information comes from. So if you hit reply to the auto emails, um, you'll get to that inbox and I would be happy to share those recipes and PowerPoints with the people who are interested. Uh, okay. So, and then another question um, that came in is how many cups of mashed potato do you think is sufficient for each student to have a good practice? It's good to know for, of course, budgeting and ordering. Right. Um, and part of that's going to depend on how many days because they don't keep well. So my kids make them fresh every day. Um, and they pipe on wax paper and I have them, you know, they pipe and we look at it, we talk about it, we work on technique. They scoop it up, they put it back in their bag and use it again. So each of my kids maybe has two to three cups prepared per day, depending on how many times they're going to use it. Or even maybe group, maybe three cups per group per day. Okay, that's great to know, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then we had another great comment that said, thank you so much for sharing this project. Uh, so many great ideas uh, and also, we have um, another teacher who wrote, if anyone's interested in doing something similar and raise money for charity, I did a cake challenge for charity with my middle school students. Oh, and fun. she shared a link, which I will um, send out to everyone in the chat. And I can also send to you later if you would like, Stephanie. Um, I will send that out now in the chat. So thank you so much for sharing that because I'm excited to, to click on that and see more. Yeah, absolutely. And then also we had uh, the question come in, how do you keep with, how do you keep the refrigerated cakes from getting gloopy on top? We cover ours in plastic wrap. Yeah, we just, I, we double plastic wrap them. Um, I don't know if they're referring to like the plastic wrap hitting the top, but we, we pull tight on the plastic wrap. Um, but I've never had a problem with consistency of frosting or anything like that. Um, and in the recipe doc that I'll send, my buttercream recipe is in there too. Um, it has whipping cream in it that makes it a little bit lighter. And so I don't know if that is part of why we never have issues with it, but we beat the heck out of it with the whipping cream and it makes it lighter. Um, so you don't get such a heavy buttercream because I'm just not a fan of that. So I started adding whipping cream to my frosting. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I just have, we have some big bakery boxes like you would get at the grocery store um, that without tops on that we put things in. So that sometimes helps. Otherwise, students sometimes I've had them when we have those boxes, they'll get like popsicle sticks out and tape to the inside of their box. And then, um, you know, if the box or the container isn't tall enough, then their plastic wrap goes over that to give it a little more height if that's what the issue is from the plastic wrap hitting it. I don't know if that's what they're referring to, um, but we just build height with popsicle sticks if we need to, or pencils if that's all we have. They get, they get pretty creative when they have to problem solve fast on how to save their cupcakes. <laughs> and you have to protect the cupcakes. Yes, it's serious business. Yeah. <laughs> um, we also had a question that came in that said, I'm not great at piping. Uh, any video resources that you know of that you have your students watch? I love the Wilton series. I'm in no way affiliated with them. I don't work for them, but I think they do a great job on their website. And so just some tips that I've learned is if you're holding it straight up or 90 degree angle, um, depending on what you're doing. So just being awareness of that. And I just practice, practice, practice before I was comfortable teaching my students. And the the ones that I shared way at the beginning, those were all actually before I even took cake decorating classes at our local Joanne store. 
Um, and I know like Hobby Lobby has them and stuff too, but I just started learning on my own from watching YouTube videos, but also the Wilton website um, and just bought myself like a cake decorating kit with all the tips and stuff in. Um, the first couple of cakes I made were pretty ugly. I didn't show you guys those ones. <laughs> but um, yeah, just practice yourself and just be aware of the angle of your bag because depending on what you're doing, that makes a difference. The 1M tip is my favorite, you guys. I can do so much with that one tip. So um, make that one your best friend because that's easy to do. And then like if you're doing grass, you just have to go straight up and down with it. If you're doing... Um, roses get your um your hand angled i think last year one of their requirements if they didn't put in their cupcake wars they all had to show me that they could do pipe a rose that was one thing i i challenged them that they had to do and i i showed them and they all learned real quickly how easy it is and that's something you can easily google and find on that wilton website also but that built so much confidence that this really isn't that hard that's fantastic. Um, another question is, any suggestions for funding to pay for materials if you don't have a budget? Good question. Um, so I've always been blessed with, with a decent budget. Um, I'm trying to think if, and it depends on states, but some states, Carl Perkins funds might help pay for some of this. Um, it's, it's, all states are different in how you can use Carl Perkins funds if you can use it for consumables or not. Um, but that's something I would check into, especially if you're looking at buying the equipment, like your cake decorating supplies um, and like a kit and all your piping tools. That's something that you're likely to be able to use Perkins funds to start with um, to kind of build your, your equipment stash up. As far as consumables go, um, I've never had to do this, but one thing I've heard people do is they reach out to parents and say, hey, if you're able, can you donate a bag of flour, a bag of powdered sugar, even other staff, you know, if they're doing a cool project like this, they might be willing to, to bring in some of those ingredients for you, um, if that's what you're looking for. It, the, I always use gel food coloring now. That does get kind of pricey, and I'm always very aware and I make my students very aware of how much you need to use that we do a little bit at a time you can always add more but you can't take it back out so um only using kind of what we need to to get our colors that way um that's probably the most expensive consumable in all of it and butter butter is expensive um but yeah if each of your students or you know depending on the area you're in reach out even throw it on social media. Hey, you guys, I want to do this cool project with my students. If you want to drop off a couple bags of flour at school or sugar, that might work really well too. Um, so we had a number of questions that come in and I'm sorry that I didn't think about it of please put the email address for getting the resources in the chat. Of course, I'm wetting the chat, so I didn't even think to do that. But yes, I did just send out the engage at nascoeducation.com in that chat function so you can copy and paste the email address there and um thank you all for asking i'm sorry that i didn't even think about it technology uh, so another comment came in and said cookies uh for kids cancer is also a great fundraiser to do with your class um so perhaps a, a great cookie decorating and that's what you said you did in semester one too yeah right? we did um just flood icing with a royal icing and actually we <laughs> This week we have 120 cookies yet to do. They're all baked, but we have to decorate 120 cookies for our power lifting team. So we will be doing that the next couple of days. So that's another technique. And one of my students actually works at a bakery in town and part of her job is helping to decorate cookies. So I think her and I are gonna be doing all of them. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> I haven't taught it yet this semester. <laughs> well, that sounds like a, a great week project for your power lifting team. Yeah, and that's one of the things um, Again, a little off topic, but one of the things we do, because we are a licensed restaurant, we can do a little bit more of it, but my students, are they do a lot of catering projects. Um, in a, two weeks, we have a baked potato bar to do for our middle school staff. So we will be making all the baked potatoes and putting the fixings together and doing like some taco chicken to put on their baked potatoes. And then that can be a fundraiser in some ways too, 
we do make a little bit of money every time we do that. So um, like these powerlifting cookies, we will make some money in making cookies. And then that just goes into a fund that I can, you know, with my school, I can use it for whatever I want to. It just sits there, it rolls over year after year. So um, definitely check with your accounting department to see if you can set something like that up, but it works really well for us. And I have invoices and everything that I send out um, when people do buy from us. So that's great. Um, so another question is, do you have a favorite pastry bag or, or tips that you use? And I know you mentioned the tips already, but. Yeah, I, I buy all Wilton because I'm just used to their numbering system. And for pastry bags, get disposable. Um, I myself at home use the reusable ones, but I. Um, in, okay, I like the Wilton bags too. They're heavier quality heavier duty than some of the other ones because I've gotten some off of Amazon that are just cheaper and my students squeeze too hard or if they get their buttercream too thick it'll bust off the side they'll just rip a seam open in the bag so I usually splurge on the Wilton bags but we reuse them day after day when we actually get to the cake decorating so they'll you know mix up their colors fill the bag and they're not doing that every day then. you know we put we saran wrap the end and we Put rubber bands around the other end and seal it all up so they can use those day after day that's great and then the next question is what episode of cupcake wars is your favorite to show your kids whatever one comes up when i go to foodnetwork.com <laughs> um depending on the time of year that we're doing this when i do this in the fall i usually find like a halloween one just because it's kind of themey around then um i'm trying to think there's some other ones that i've done there's like a i don't know what it exactly what it is but it's a it was they were doing something for the emmys i think and that's another one that the kids really liked but i don't necessarily have one go-to i usually just look in and see what the kids might be interested in again i fly by the seat of my pants i don't even know what i'm teaching half the day tomorrow <laughs> that's that's exciting that's how I operate. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the next question is, how many students do you typically have per team? Sorry if you already said this earlier on, but I just That's wanted okay. to clarify. Um, this year, I'm not going to do more than two. I typically two to three. Um, last year, I had one student who just wanted to work alone. And I'm usually OK with that, too, as long as I have space for it, depending on the size of the class. But some students just don't like working with others, and I'm, I don't force them. In, for something like this because some students really get into it. I had a student tell me one time um, her group was not cooperating with her. She was with two other students and I heard her yelling at them saying this is the whole reason I took this exploratory class. I'm like you took the class for cupcake wars. Like it's really that important to you? Okay let's figure this out. <laughs> so it is something that they know what happens year after year and they just they really get into it. Yeah. That's really fun. Um, the next question is for purchasing tips for a classroom, how many different tips do you have for each student? I just have a bucket of them. Um, and when, so like the 1M tips, I probably, you know, I, I have five or six of those because we use those all the time. I've got, and some of it was there before I took over at this school. Um, the ones that we commonly use, like the grass tip, we don't use that often. I have maybe two or three of those. And I've, I haven't really purchased many new tips since I've been there because we had so many. They just dig and find what they want. But the ones that we use the most common, there's, you really only need like one, maybe two per group. If you're using couplers, in your piping bag so you can switch the tips out um you definitely only need one of each tip per group and even that if you know if you invest in the couplers to be able to swap them out then you don't need as many tips so the couplers if you're not familiar you put part of it in the bag you put the tip on and then you screw the end on and it allows you to switch tips so you can use the same color butter cream with different tips without having a whole nother bag of frosting but then you can also switch your tip to a different bag easily. That's great. 
Um, the next question is, what size bag do you have st students practice with? I'm wondering if the 18 inch is too big or cumbersome. Yeah, um, I, I think they're 12 that I get. They're the smaller, the smallest ones that they have at Walmart or Joanne. I think they're 12 inch. The 18 are, are too big. Now, when we do, like I mentioned, the Optimus cupcakes, our big village wide breakfast that happens every year, we get the 18 inch bags. So we're not refilling all the time because we are doing hundreds of cupcakes um, just with the little swirl on top. And then we're not refilling so much. But for, for this, get smaller bags. Um, and then the last question also came in, what cake decorating tip kit do you suggest purchasing, Wilton or something off Amazon? I prefer Wilton just because I, I know their quality products. I don't know a lot of the brands from Amazon. Um, sometimes I feel like you get what you pay for. Not, I mean, sometimes you can find really good bargains. I bought the white cupcake or the white cake decorating kit with a purple handle and everything in it from Joanne Fabric with a 50% off coupon, both for at home and for at school. And then I just add to it when I need to. So that's probably the only thing I purchased for um, the school that I'm currently at in addition to what was already there. And so that's a good variety of tips. And then I can just add to it, um, you know, if I need to do I'm, I'm lucky with how we're able to purchase that. I don't have to order things ahead of time. I just have a school credit card and I can run to the store and get what I need. And if I'm really quick, I can go on my lunch break. But um, I don't have to order things ahead of time or anything like that. So if a student's like, hey, I really need another, um, we need another grass tip. Okay, I can, I can run and get it tonight or, you know, whatever. Um, I try to <laughs> run to Joanne only like once a week when I have to, but, um, you know, if we can get organized and once they get planned, if I can make it a weekend trip too, that's helpful. That's great. Um, so a couple more questions have come in. One is I have had in the past, we're still virtual classes, um, classes of 30 students. How would you divide labor within those groups? So read it again. Are we talking about doing this virtually? Um, no, I think in person, but oh, okay. with 30 students. I would put them in groups of no more than three um, in however much you can distance. I mean, obviously that's a huge, huge thing right now. Um, another thing I would maybe consider is dividing it in half and having 15 work on it at a time in groups of three and having the other 15 students do another unit or something and then flopping them um, so you don't have as many kids working on it at a, at a time if that works with the schedule. But if I have that many students, that's probably what I would do. Again, I'm lucky that I never have classes that big. Um, I know I'm in a very good situation in small class sizes, decent budget, which makes this a lot easier. But with 30 students, I don't think I would try this with that many. Because then you just don't get the the one-on-one -on -one time with them to sit and really pipe with them. And because sometimes in right now it's really hard and I can't imagine how it's going to be this spring with me. But I'm helping them hold the bag. Like my hands are over their hands, helping them at least get started and figuring it out. So um, that's something you definitely have to consider. Yeah. Um, and I think that this is a, a great comment to to wrap up on. Um, but but somebody wrote in, I would love for you to do another webinar and do demos with different tips and designs. Is this a possibility? Um, sure. So <laughs> it's definitely something that Stephanie and I can talk about. Um, yes. Cause it's clear that, you know, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for coming on and, and sharing this with us um, and, and hopefully more exciting cake decorating to come. Yeah, absolutely. It's so fun. And like I said, the students love it. It's, it's fun and great hobbies. Yeah. So just a couple reminders. I did uh, in that chat box, put the, in the question box, put the email, uh, download those handouts. And thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we have kind of an ongoing Family Consumer Sciences series. Um, so our March webinar is scheduled and that is on fashion 
design, working with a designer who's had a business for a number of years, um, and then also is going to specifically be talking about um, designing spaces in homes. Um, but it should be a, a pretty fun uh, webinar that we're having next month in March. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you again for tuning in. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Stephanie for sharing and leading this, this wonderful conversation. And we hope to see you all, all again soon. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you.